Zahari Shah was the 53-year-old captain of flight MH370. He was an experienced senior pilot. He was also married with adult children and grandkids. He's an intriguing figure. He's got quite a lot of uh, aspects to him. By all accounts, he was a superb pilot, absolutely full of capacity to train others, highly respected, highly liked. He seemed to be a fun guy, by all accounts. But it's the flying he did at home that raised the alarm. Seven days after MH370's disappearance, Malaysian police found his flight simulator. That's it in the background. On it, investigators found practice flights to the southern Indian Ocean. The simulator coordinates showed definitely what he had planned. And all he had to do was keep a note of these coordinates. He could put into the flight management computers on the night it would take him exactly where he had planned to go. Who plans a flight to go to the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Someone is trying to make the aircraft disappear. They did it very well. Here at the Haas Aviation Museum, just south of Sydney, former Qantas captain Mike Glenn demonstrates how to reprogram the Boeing 777 flight path. So we keep uh, the number four engine going. We see we've got room one uh, loaded here. That is the actual flight plan that was uh, loaded in the uh, Malaysian 370 uh, when it took off. But there is a, a second route, and this is the actual route that Captain Zahari used. The pink line is uh, route one, the blue line is route two. You can see the route flown by Zahari on his home simulator five weeks earlier mirrors MH370's final flight. And so by practicing that flight on his flight simulator, he was practicing what could only be a suicide murder flight. It was pretty obvious that uh, someone had been in charge of that aircraft. The aircraft do not do the kind of thing uh, that that aircraft did uh, unless someone is at the controls. In 2020, I spoke to Tony Abbott for the first instalment of this investigation. He said he was in no doubt who was responsible. My very clear understanding from the very top levels of the Malaysian government is that uh, from very, very early on here, uh, they thought it was uh, murder-suicide by the pilot. They said that to you? I'm not going to say uh, who said what to whom, but let me reiterate, I want to be absolutely crystal clear. Uh, it was understood uh, at the highest levels that this was almost certainly murder-suicide by the pilot, uh, mass murder-suicide by the pilot. How long after the plane disappeared did that information become clear to you? Uh, within a matter of uh, uh, a week or so. It was a stunning revelation. In private, pilot Zahari Shah was believed to have acted alone. But in public, the Malaysian government had a different story. Despite media reports that the plane was hijacked, I wish to be very clear. We are still investigating all possibilities as to what caused MH370 to deviate from its original flight path. I consider Zahari's flight simulator to be probably the most compelling piece of evidence pointing to his culpability. Jeff Wise is an aviation commentator and podcaster. He says the priority now is to find MH370. Only then can we look for motive. The thing that we always want to know is why did that person do that? But when it comes to solving this mystery, it kind of doesn't matter what the motive is. We need to figure out what happened to this plane. The data is going to tell us where the plane went. The wreckage is going to tell us how it impacted if it did go into the ocean. Only after we figure out who is responsible for this act 
then we can have the luxury of saying, this is why they did it. 